batteries. The lifeblood of every plug-in electric car being made today from the Tesla Model 3 through to the Nissan Leaf, Chevrolet Bolt EV, and yes, even the Mahindra E20 Plus. As the world transitions away from fossil fuels towards plug-in vehicles with two, three, four, or even more wheels, we're seeing a massive demand globally for high-capacity, long-life lithium-ion battery packs. And while the raw materials we need to make those battery packs are reasonably abundant on our planet, demand is currently far outstripping supply, causing automakers to revise their vehicle rollout plans, the price of lithium cells to skyrocket, and wait lists for cars like the Hyundai Kona and Audi e-tron extend months or even years into the future. If raw materials are reasonably abundant on the earth and demand is high, why aren't we seeing more battery facilities just pop up to keep up with demand? And why are battery prices still so expensive? It's a question we're asked pretty regularly on this channel, and given some recent reports out of Tesla's Gigafactory 1 in Reno, Nevada, where some current and former employees claim issues with workflow and carelessness of staff is leading to some pretty monumental wastage, we felt it was a good time to deal with some of the issues surrounding battery production. Before I get into the nitty-gritty of the production process, it's worth making a nod to the mining and refining process. The raw materials used in lithium-ion batteries don't have the nicest mining process and can, if not dealt with in a responsible manner, have some pretty nasty impact on the planet. Additionally, some cobalt mining operations, most but not all lithium-ion battery chemistries still use cobalt today as part of the cell construction, are known for their poor working conditions and ties to child and slave labour. However, responsible automakers are now starting to demand that their raw materials are obtained from mines which do their best to ensure minimal impact on the local environment, as well as employ blockchain and other tech to track metals from mine to refinery to ensure that appropriate ethical and environmental safeguards have been followed. I'm going to save all of that, however, for a future video. So now let's turn our attention to the actual manufacturing process, where raw materials enter into a battery production facility and finished battery cells, or sometimes even finished battery packs, come out the other end. In order to ensure that each battery cell can function as it should and enjoy a long, healthy life, Immense care is taken at every step of the manufacturing process in a battery facility to ensure that contamination is kept to an absolute minimum. Because batteries are operating at the molecular level and rely on tolerances thinner than a human hair, sometimes even thousands of times thinner than a human hair to ensure correct operation, the first part of the process relies on extreme quality control of raw materials. Any impurities in the raw materials entering the factory leads to impurities in the finished product, so regular checks are made to ensure that those materials meet the required chemical composition and purity. I should note too that battery production facilities operate with the same kind of clean room conditions as microprocessor plants. Workers have to go through a multi-stage cleaning process to even enter the facility and wear special clean room suits that cover head, hands, feet, body, hair and even mouth. Air filtration systems operate with massive redundancy and are capable of filtering an inordinate amount of air per minute to ensure that no contaminants enter the facility. And in most cases, any infractions of clean room policy, be they caused by a human or a machine, require that the production line comes to a halt and things be checked to ensure that no contamination has occurred before manufacturing can continue. The costs associated with building a production facility that achieves that level of cleanliness, not to mention training staff on the production process, takes a lot of time and money. When I visited Nissan's Sunderland battery production facility back in 2014, I was told the construction of the facility itself required an ever-increasingly skilled and trained construction crew, with each step in construction requiring an additional level of clean room precautions. Human hair, skin, anything in fact, can cause a halt in production. And if a contaminant is undetected, it can result in a battery with a reduced cell life or cell capacity, or perhaps more scarily, a battery which eventually spontaneously shorts out and causes a fire. To stop this, good practice requires an almost continuous sampling of cells to take place as they make their way through the production facility. 
Since materials and components are tracked from the start, any faults can be traced back to their source quickly and faulty cells are either broken apart and recycled, if possible, or they go to a specialist lab for forensic examination, a process which ultimately allows a facility to improve its practices and to ensure that whatever went wrong doesn't happen again. As the cells become individually sealed, the requirements for clean room conditions drop, with module construction and then battery pack construction less demanding of clean room conditions. And nevertheless, start to finish requires a lot of careful processes, very expensive equipment and highly trained staff. And to do that takes a lot of time, money and experience, which is why companies like LG Chem and Samsung SDI have a massive hold on the automotive lithium-ion battery market. And it's why Tesla is working alongside Panasonic at Gigafactory One to produce its own cells. Without Panasonic's specialist knowledge and years of experience, Tesla wouldn't be producing the volume of battery cells that it currently is. Which brings me to the stories that have been flowing around this week that allege there's a massive amount of wastage happening at the Tesla Panasonic cell production facility inside Gigafactory One. Former and current staff are alleging that Panasonic's battery making facilities have struggled to keep clean room policies, resulting in foreign bodies like tape and scissors falling into vats of raw electrode materials and spoiling entire batches of materials. But, alleges some sources, workers aren't speaking up when they do something wrong, resulting in as many as half a million battery cells being thrown out per day due to poor practices and manufacturing defects. I've not visited the Gigafactory and I don't have any way to check on these reports, but I can say from my experiences in other facilities in an environment where everything has to be just so in order to ensure correct production, stress has absolutely no home. If these allegations are true, that's not the case at Panasonic's production facility. However, I can also tell you that a fairly large wastage is normal in the battery manufacturing process, especially if acceptance tolerances are very small, which they need to be for automotive grade lithium ion batteries. Too much wastage is bad for production and bad for a company, bottom line, which loops back to the need for highly trained, highly competent staff, which in turn explains why lithium ion battery production facilities aren't things you can just pop up overnight as the whim takes you. Or in other words, it explains why many automakers have decided to leave the battery production to somebody else, relying instead to focus on their core competencies rather than try and learn an entire new industry from scratch. Yes, battery shortages are real, and yes, we need more battery production facilities online. But the ramp up is likely to take a while for all of the reasons I've listed above. Rush construction, poor staff training and cut corners and ultimately bad stuff follows. That's it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.